focus on nickel as opposed to other metals like lithium? Well, although there's a number of elements um, that are very important to the battery and, and EV growth market, I feel that nickel is the, um, is the most critical and the largest forecast demand increased. Um, Hi, how's everybody doing today? I'm your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, Brad Vandenbush, the CEO of Fathom Nickel. How are you doing today, Brad? Very good. Thanks, Rich. I'm looking forward to speaking with you today. Yeah, I'm excited to learn more about your company and have our community also learn about your company today for the first time. Maybe you can start by telling us a little bit about yourself. Well, Rick, my name is Brad Vandenbush, as you said. I'm the president and CEO of Fathom Nickel. I'm also a co-founder of the company, along with Ian Fraser, who is our vice president of exploration. I'm a geologist by training, graduated from the University of Manitoba with a BSc Geology Honours in 1985. And I've been involved in the resource exploration development business for over 35 years, the last 20 of it. Uh, in various management and executive positions, uh, uh, mainly with public companies, publicly listed companies. Fantastic. Brad, can you give us some insight into Fathom, its genesis, history, and focus? Sure, sure, Rich. Um, as I mentioned, Ian uh, Fraser and I are, are co-founders of Fathom. We started the company in 2015 with a specific mandate to source projects that could supply the mineral and metal needs of this and support the growing green movement, specifically the battery and the EV electric vehicle demands. Fathom was a private company for the first six years and supported mainly by investment from management, friends and family and a small circle of brokers. And we raised about $2 million on our, on our own as a, as a private company to, to move things forward. So we use this time as a private company to compile um, evaluate and interpret uh, historic data on the project and build this strong geological model and exploration plan and to get drill ready targets um, ready for success when the industry rebounded. And in early 2021, on the back of a rebounding industry and a growing demand for the battery and EV markets, um, particularly nickel, Fathom completed a public listing on the CSE under the symbol FNI and raised approximately $11.15 million. Uh, Fathom is comprised of an experienced team with over 100 years uh, finding and developing mining projects. Uh, in addition to Ian and myself, management consists of Doug Porter, our CFO, and Manish Grigo, our Director of Corporate Development and IR. And to round things out, we have a board of directors comprised of Ian and myself, plus three well-seasoned independent directors, John Morgan, Mark Cummings, and Eugene Chen. Why focus on nickel as opposed to other metals like lithium? Well, although there's a number of elements um, that are very important to the battery and, and EV growth market, I feel that nickel is the, um, is the most critical and the largest forecast demand increased. Um, a significant quantity of nickel is required for the, the technologies currently being used and, it's, and, and the ones likely to be developed in the future. And for performing, um, for the best performing uh, batteries uh, in the EV market, uh, each individual battery contains approximately 39 kilograms or 85 pounds of nickel. And given the global conversion uh, to, to EVs in the coming decades, uh, the demand for nickel should be here to stay. Yeah, I agree. I agree. The big nickel in uh, Sudbury is a place I visited and uh, there's a, there's a lot of nickel out there and, and uh, definitely it's uh, one of the commodities that is very hot right now. Can you give us a quick breakdown of your project in particular, where it's located, why you chose that area and what makes the project so attractive? Well, the project's located in, um, in Saskatchewan, Canada. It's a very mining friendly jurisdiction, uh, consistently ranked in the top 10 uh, jurisdictions for mining in the world by the Fraser Institute. Um, we chose the area for a combination of reasons. You know, one is um, first we're familiar with, uh, with the project um, and it has a very attractive grade. It fits our, our mandate of, um, of nickel and associated battery, battery minerals. And metals, and um, 
you know, secondly, Ian and I have worked in Saskatchewan before, so we not only know the technical aspects of the project, but we're familiar with the government, with the permitting, with the stakeholders, with the First Nations of, of the area. And, um, you know, we figure we're well poised to, um, to really um, bring a new opportunity in Saskatchewan to, uh, to fruition and, and add some real shareholder value in this, in this project. Saskatchewan has been uh, under recognized in the past and it's really coming into its own. It's, it's got some interest from some of the other uh, majors in the, in the area now, both Rio, uh, Rio Tinto and BHP have, uh, have shown interest in Saskatchewan and, and uh, been involved in, um, in some uh, joint venture opportunities. So really looking forward to moving forward in that jurisdiction. Very good. The Alberta Lake Project centers around the historic and very high grade rod and stone mine. Can you put those grades into context compared to other NI, CU, and PGM exploration projects? Maybe give us some comparisons. Okay. Well, there, there are very few primary nickel deposits uh, in the world that have PGE or platinum group element uh, content comparable what was um, recovered at Rottenstone. So it's very rare, very unique. Uh, the two comparable deposits uh, in terms of the high grade associated uh, platinum group elements are, uh, are Norilsk in Russia and uh, the Raglan by Glencore, uh, Glencore uh, in Northern Quebec. And to get these, these big PGE platinum group element contents, you need to have magmatic systems, which are very large. And that is why we feel, you know, Rottenstone and the, and the, the regional Albert Lake project um, is, is very, a very large nickel PGE type magmatic system. How did you, how did such a high grade asset become available to Fathom? Well, good question, Rich. Fathom, Fathom Management's known about this for a long time. In fact, um, we knew about the core project for 20 years. Uh, Ian Fraser was responsible for sourcing this project for a previous owner who was focused on uranium. And um, Ian and I had always wanted to obtain this project. And uh, when we put Fathom together, again, Fathom was put together specifically to look for um, metals and minerals to support this growing green revolution and the, particularly the battery EV market. And we were able to negotiate uh, for the Rottenstone core project um, very, uh, in, under very favorable terms uh, in 2015, which was a low in the, in the nickel, nickel business. So uh, since acquiring the project, um, we've expanded the land base from its original 10,000 hectares around the Rotten Stone Mine to its current 90,000 hectares and uh, made it into a regional play and control the structural trend. Wow. The project had historic production in the 1960s, but hasn't had a lot of advancement since then. Can you give us some feedback as to why this is the case and what work has been done prior to Fathom acquiring the project? Uh, you're right. Like Very little work is, uh, was done during this time frame. Uh, mainly limited exploration uh, was, was done by the previous owners to, to keep the title. With the exceptions of some detailed mapping uh, and geophysical programs that were performed um, in the early 90s, 90, 1990 to 92 in specific, and some airborne geophysics and some ground geophysics and some very intermittent uh, drilling from 1999 to 2008. And the reason, the main reason I believe for this relatively small amount of work um, include a, a lack of understanding of the type of geological setting um, and the geological model required for this type of a magmatic nickel deposit. It's, um, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of work. It needs, it, it, needs, it, it, it needs a person to set up or a company to set up the, the base case and really develop that model so that you have a, an exploration plan that's poised for success. And, and the other reasons are there was low nickel prices during a lot of this time and the programs were underfunded. The, the, the companies that uh, mainly own this for the couple of decades before we picked it up were not nickel focused, they were uranium focused and it never got the um, attention that it deserved. Since Fathom acquired the project, what work has been done and why? So Fathom inherited a, a very large uh, and very good geological database. So as, as a private company um, and with the assistance of some nickel experts, we were able to create or recreate the geological setting. So essentially create the, the, 
uh, the geological uh, extent, the geochemical signature or fingerprint, and, and to some extent, um, uh, just the, the overall historic setting of, of the project. So this signature is very important as it, um, as it gives us a, a, a snapshot into the future of what we need to find. So essentially, let me just put this in more, I guess, more uh, um, layman's terms. So we now have a very good understanding of what the signature of these types of deposits look like and understand the necessary structural traps these systems require for the deposition of nickel platinum PG projects. As a, as a private company, we invested a great deal of time and resources analyzing, interpreting, and reinterpreting this historic data to better understand the rotten stone model. We now have a systematic plan designed to make new discoveries. Fantastic. And what are your exploration plans for the remainder of 2021 and into 2022? And are there specific targets that you've identified that you will be focusing on? Yeah, so our preliminary results from our, our summer 2021 field program have highlighted areas uh, in need of follow-up and additional prospecting and detailed soil geochem, and of course, drilling. So we're currently drilling targets uh, that we have generated from the initial gradient mag survey and are coincident with anomalous areas defined by our, our other geophysics, such as the gravity, the borehole EM, and, and surface and, uh, and airborne EM. So on, uh, more concisely, targets developed from anomalies based on these um, previous geological surveys. So the current program will continue, the current drill program will continue until the end of October. And then that uh, the drill rig will be staying on site and beginning in late 2022, or not late, sorry, in January, 2022, utilizing the lake ice, we will follow up on the successful drilling results uh, generated from this program. So we're planning a total of 6,000 meters of drilling uh, during these two programs. Wow. In your mind, what would success look like for the upcoming phase of drilling? So finding a mineral deposit uh, you know, takes time. Um, at this point, if, if we intersect the right host rock and the right geochemistry based on our model within this host rock, uh, and follow-up borehole geophysics indicates uh, off-hole conductivity, uh, this means we're really close and this is a success scenario. Um, and in that case, we would initially drill, and, uh, and immediately drill, I should say, a second hole and follow up on that conductivity anomaly. Now, if we intersect mineralized rotten stone type host rock, this is an obvious success. This is basically a proof of concept. And right. at the ultimate level, if we're uh, very fortunate uh, and, and um, intersect mineralization identical to the rotten stone-like grade, uh, this is an enormous success and, and, um, and there'll be no, no questions asked at this, at this point. Because this, this was, um, you know, really it was one of the, uh, the rotten stone deposit itself was one of the highest grade that I've ever seen. And it was pushing 4% nickel, um, one and a half copper, and nine to 12 grams per ton of, of, of PGEs. So there's not a lot of deposits that have those kind of grades. So that's, um, that's the catalyst behind the real focus on, on, on this project. Here at Rich TV Live, we love to understand the fundamentals of the company. What is Fathom's cash position and are you well positioned to deliver on your exploration plans? <clears throat> um, yeah, so Fathom currently has um, a little over 7 million Canadian in the bank, which Great. is uh, plenty to run the company through next year, through 2022, and fully fund its current drilling program and its uh, Q1, Q2, 2022 drilling program. So essentially we're well-funded for the next two drill programs and for company overhead through 2022. Very well done. That's what we'd love to hear. And we love to understand the, the meat and potatoes of the company. So can you touch base a little bit on the share structure of the company? So Fathom currently has uh, 45 million shares outstanding, pretty tight love share it. structure. Love we're it. Not into the, we're not pushing a billion. Um, yes, good, very good. <laughs> and we've got good support in both the um, retail and institutional side of, side of things from an investor standpoint. 
About 6.5 million of these shares are held by management and insiders and fully diluted, including our options and warrants, um, we'd be 56 million shares outstanding. I love it. I always tell our audience, 100 million is good, 50 million is bingo, and you guys are right around that number. So that's exactly what we look for. A large position and a large portion of our audience is based in America and also internationally in Frankfurt that may not be able to purchase shares on the Canadian Securities Exchange. Does the company have plans to list on the U.S. stock exchange or other other exchanges? So in, in addition to our CSE listing, we are um, we're currently listed on, on the Frankfurt Exchange under the Great. symbol 6Q5. Great. And we're also on the OTC in the U.S. under the symbol uh, FNICF. Perfect. Um, we're currently in the process of applying for our DTC eligibility for the U.S. market. We expect to get that. It's a bit backlogged, but probably in the next four to six weeks. Oh, fantastic. That means our entire community if interested, can get into this security, which is great. How can viewers that are interested in learning more about your company get in contact with you or the company if they have any questions? Um, well, shareholders can visit the company website at um, www.fathomnickel.com and our CDAR profile, obviously, on www.cedar.com. Um, so from that, you can get um, contact emails, uh, contact email, which will be, direct you to the appropriate personnel in the company. Or if you want to reach out directly um, to Manish Grigo, our director of corporate development at, um, and IR, I mean, at that M Grigo, M G R I G O, at fathomnickel.com, or myself, uh, Brad or B Vanden, B V A N D E N, at uh, fathomnickel.com. Fantastic. Now, I must remind everyone that Rich TV Live is strictly for information education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything that we talk about or discuss here in Rich TV Live. In saying that, I like what I hear. Uh, money in the bank, tight share structure, starting your drilling program with the potential of, if you guys hit, potential home run. So, if you guys like these videos, please smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere, and subscribe. I'm here today with the CEO, Brad Vandenbush of Fathom Nickel. Thank you for joining us today, Brad. Thank you for having me, Rich. I really enjoyed it. Always a pleasure. I'd love to invite you back if you ever have any big breaking news or anything you want to discuss. Love to invite you back here on Rich TV Live. And remember, guys, if you're not winning, you're not watching, we bring you the winners and we bring them to you first. This is Rich from Rich to be Live saying, have a nice day, everybody, and we'll talk to you soon.